pecker or poo? It's a weird topic, yeah? But I'm betting that at some point, most of you in the audience have gotten your hands dirty, so to speak, changing a nappy. Am I right? For those of us that look after children, especially babies or toddlers, toileting is at the forefront of your mind. But not long after our little cherub's toilet train, our mind moves quickly towards their next milestones. But our toilet habits are, in fact, incredibly important. And I'm here to share with you why looking at your poo is critical to your health. But more importantly, how studying your poo can, in fact, change the face and future of medicine. You see, I believe your poo is like a window to your health. I liken it to the oil in your car. It's the marvellous end product of our inner workings. And just like our car, we can intermittently check our poo to see how our health is going. To just give you a little background, I grew up in country New South Wales, Australia, and my father was a mechanical engineer in one of the local coal mines. And it was commonplace for him to take us with him to the workshop on the weekends. So we would play in and around the large earth-moving equipment. Now, no doubt you realise that mining is a billion-dollar industry. It's an industry that deftly records and measures its productivity. And something that really stood out to me as a child was the rigorous maintenance program that every piece of machinery underwent. Filters were changed, hoses were checked, and even oil was tested to check for engine wear and tear. So the maintenance of these machines was to ensure reliability. But more importantly, it was there to prevent catastrophic breakdown. Now, fast forward 15 years, and I moved to university to study nutrition, naturopathy and functional medicine. And I ended up specialising in gut health and chronic disease. And perhaps there's a weird connection, a connection to my childhood, that to keep something healthy, to keep something productive, you need regular preventative maintenance. So in clinic today, I see people with poor health, with gut issues and chronic diseases. And the first thing I ask is, how is your poo? Because to me, that's a quick snapshot into your health. But what is a healthy poo? A poo is healthy if it's easy to pass, if it sinks to the bottom of the toilet and is a continuous log. So you betcha, in clinic, I want to know how often does it sink or float? Does it look like pellets or is it watery and unformed, kind of gross? And I realise it's awkward and it's an uncomfortable conversation sometimes, but it's a really important conversation to be having regarding health. Now, so far, I've talked about health on a micro scale, but I'd actually like to share with you my ideas on health on a bigger level. We are currently facing a chronic disease epidemic. The rates of cardiovascular disease, cancer, obesity, diabetes and arthritis are going through the roof. But furthermore, those diseases are the most costly to treat and they are also the most preventable. Seven out of ten of the top causes of disease are due to chronic illnesses. And we also know that simply throwing money into healthcare does not necessarily equate to a longer life expectancy. The US, for example, spend more than 16% of their GDP on all things health-related. However, countries in Europe and even Australia are spending 10% and are gaining five years on their life expectancy. So the matter of the fact is, our system is set up for acute care. We are brilliant at solving those urgent health issues. Things like acute infections, trauma, acute pain management, and emergency care. However, we are just simply missing the mark on chronic disease. So I believe the acute care model that currently dominates our health system can move forward and transition towards a preventative model, a system that also accommodates the appropriate treatment of chronic disease. So what if we worked like the mechanical engineers worked 30 years ago and we routinely monitored and measured our health? And what if we measured our waste products, our poo, to detect or 
look for any subtle changes so that we can act early on before disease, in fact, takes, takes hold. Because this is what a functional medicine naturopath does. We measure and document people's health over time. And this measuring, or perhaps you can call it preventative maintenance, allows for small changes to be corrected before true disease takes hold. But I've got a story for you. Anna is a mother of three, and after the birth of her last child, she suffered multiple complications. She ended up having life-saving surgery, which resulted in a hysterectomy. However, since that time, she has informed that she suffered debilitating lower back pain. The back pain is so severe that it's impacted on every aspect of her life. So I met Anna in my clinic two and a half years later, and she tells me that she is constantly living on pain medications and anti-inflammatories, that she can't pick up her children, she can't sleep on her side, she can't sit for long periods. She is, in fact, having trouble with her sexual relationship with her husband. It's painful. And she even confided that she has had thoughts of suicide. Now, needless to say, Anna was in a desperate state. She had been to multiple specialists. She had seen physical therapists. She had had test after test and still no firm confirmation of what was going on. So Anna and I worked together and we did a functional medicine assessment. I asked her about her bowel habits. I talked to her about her sleep, her moods, her energy, and I detailed her food intake. And now remember, Anna presented with severe back pain. And the thing I learned from functional medicine is that when a patient complains of pain is not often where the disease actually stems from. So when I assessed Anna clinically and when I got to her belly, I knew that I was capturing a multitude of organs, not only her gut, but also her liver, her spleen and pancreas and her reproductive organs. So when I went to touch Anna's belly, she was so incredibly tender that I could barely even lay the lightest hand. And I knew instantly that this was the cause of her lower back pain because, of course, inflammation doesn't sit still. It radiates up, it radiates down, it radiates through to wherever the tissue or the organs are surrounding. So on that basis, I created a really simple gut protocol. I sent her home and I requested further functional medicine testing. Now, when Anna returned for her second visit, two weeks later, she walked in the door and she cried. They were tears of relief. She told me that it was the first time in two and a half years that she hasn't taken any inflammatories. She told me that she's now getting down on the ground and able to start playing with her children. She told me that she's having consecutive hours of sleep, so her mind is not feeling so foggy anymore. Things she felt were really starting to turn around. So I worked with Anna for a few more sessions, and it got to the point where she was back to a normal busy mum. Now, the treatment protocol that I gave Anna was quite simple. I worked with her gut, but the focus of the treatment was based on the cause, not simply medicating the symptoms. So in Anna's example, the acute medical model saved her life, absolutely. However, it failed to resolve her long-standing, debilitating pain, and I think you can see there's a gap between the acute medical care and the preventative model that I'm proposing. So I'm going to leave you with my vision. We are facing a chronic disease epidemic. And as a healthcare practitioner, we must task ourselves with finding the cause of disease and not simply band-aiding. Because in my opinion, band-aiding the symptoms is not adequate healthcare. But more importantly, as an individual, I urge you to take an interest in preventative medicine for you and for our children. And certainly, if you are suffering vague symptoms, if you are feeling unwell or, in fact, have a chronic disease, do not settle for less. It is time to ask questions of your healthcare providers and it is time to expect more.